Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about a topic that I'm sure is on a lot of people's minds right now, and that is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver room. Now, it is no secret that going into week number 18 and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playoff run as well, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are without some of their top wide receivers. Chris Godwin, he suffered a torn ACL back in the Buccaneers' second matchup against the Saints, and then we all know what just happened with Antonio Brown and him quitting on the team. That means that the Buccaneers are going to be without both Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown, not just for Week 18 to finish off the regular season, but again, more crucially, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playoff run as well. Uh, that has left, uh, you know, huge, huge opportunities for a lot of people to step up in the absence of both of those very key starters for the Buccaneers offense. Uh, who are some of these guys and, you know, how can they potentially step up? We're going to be talking about that in this video today. So if you guys are new here, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button if you do enjoy these types of videos and leave your thoughts and opinions about this Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver situation and who you think will step up down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions opinions. But let's not, uh, you know, waste any more time. Let's go ahead and talk about the first person uh, who could possibly step up here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I say possibly because honestly, guys, it could be any one of these guys. It could be none of these guys. Um, and the Buccaneers could also sign some outside players and bring them in. You know, there's a lot of different paths that this situation could go down. You know, I think that it is, you know, personally, I think it's going to go down the route of guys stepping up. Uh, but at the end of the day, we will have to wait and see. But the first guy is Mike Evans, right? You know, Mike Evans is no secret to getting the ball thrown his way a lot. He did it for many, many years whenever the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did not have a lot of options at wide receiver uh, back in the day whenever he was first drafted. So I fully expect Mike Evans to get a lot more targets moving forward. Now, he is still dealing with a hamstring injury of his own, which could hamper his play a little bit to end the regular season. But if Mike Evans is fully healthy uh, in the playoffs, I have no doubt in my mind that Tom Brady is going to look his way a pretty healthy amount, especially in the red zone, because a fade to Mike Evans is almost uncoverable. Uh, we have just seen it time and time and time again work. So I expect even more opportunities here for Mike Evans, considering he is the only starting wide receiver left, essentially, um, after everything that has happened with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver room already. So he is the first guy that you expect to really step up and make the most of these opportunities. Uh, the next guy that may potentially step up here is a guy that a lot of people are, uh, you know, definitely supporting, um, you know, given that he was a recent draft pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that is Tyler Johnson. And so far this year, Tyler Johnson has had a lot of interesting opportunities. He has been are uh, really the first guy that the Bucks have went to whenever they do need another wide receiver to come in and uh, step up and make the most of their opportunities. And so far, Tyler Johnson this year, he has 31 receptions for 338 receiving yards, but unfortunately, zero touchdowns this year. And that stinks. You know, hopefully Tyler Johnson can pick up the pace in regards to scoring. He did have a couple of really nice plays in the Buccaneers playoff run last year, so maybe he can replicate that magic this year as well. Uh, one important thing to note here is that Tyler Johnson has actually played in 45% or more of the Buccaneers offensive snaps this year in 10 out of the 17 Bucks games so far this season. So, like I said, you know, Tyler Johnson has been getting a lot of opportunities this year. And he may be one of the first guys that the Bucks look to uh, to, you know, be a starter now uh, that the opportunity has presented itself. And, you know, Tyler Johnson, he can make some really good catches. Uh, he can do some really good things as a route runner. And he's a pretty decent run blocker as well. All these different types of things uh, the Bucks coaching staff love to have in their wide receivers. So, again, Tyler Johnson may be one of the first guys who gets this opportunity here starting in week number 18. The next guy is another player a lot of Bucks fans are going to be familiar with. It is Brashad 
Perriman. And Brashawn Perriman's been on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers since 2019, on and off, mind you. Uh, but, you know, he has a history with Bruce Arians. He has a history with Byron Leftwich. He knows the offense. And, you know, he does provide a good amount of things for the Bucs. You know, it's one of the main reasons as to why the Bucs are not playing Scotty Miller currently. And we'll talk about him a little bit later on in this video, is because Brashawn Perriman is just... Um, you know, can do a lot of different things that Scotty Miller unfortunately cannot do right now, and he's just as fast. And Perriman, he's got the size, he's, you know, 6'1", 6'2", 200-something pounds. Um, he's got the speed, as I said, uh, pretty much as fast as Scotty Miller. He can make some good catches whenever he needs to. Again, he can run block, something that the Bucks coaching staff, again, really does like in their wide receivers. And, you know, he's just an overall pretty balanced guy. Former first-round draft pick, by the way, from the Baltimore Ravens. That's still an important thing to note. Um, unfortunately, after he left the Bucks, things didn't work out with the Jets or the Bears or the Lions, but he ended up back in Tampa Bay, where I feel he is going to uh, continue to play his best football. On the year so far, he has six receptions for 123 yards and one game-winning touchdown in overtime. A lot of people have a very fond memory of that uh, whenever the Buccaneers won a couple of weeks ago, um, but he only has one start, and, you know, there have been circumstances that have prevented Brashad Perriman uh, from starting in certain games. He was on the illness list for one game, um, or actually two games, I believe, he was on the illness list, so uh, that definitely has not uh, helped out Perriman's, you know, chances of starting, but now that he's fully healthy, now that the opportunities are there, I think that he will also uh, be getting a healthy amount of snaps here moving forward. The third guy that I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will look to, and this is a name that is actually a pretty hot topic for a lot of Bucks fans right now. I feel understandably so. The guy just, you know, helped the Bucks win uh, in very spectacular fashion against the New York Jets, and that is Cyril Grayson. And, you know, Cyril Grayson, so far on this year, he has 10 receptions, 212 receiving yards, two touchdowns, one of them being a game winner last week. Uh, and he actually has two games as a starter, so one more than Brashad Perriman, uh, which I feel is a pretty interesting thing to note. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and eat crow here. You know, I did, you know, Cyril Grayson flew under my radar, essentially, right? And I think that that was the case for a lot of Bucks fans. He was the guy that was on the practice squad. He's been on and off with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers since 2019. Uh, he was a return specialist, basically, uh, during his early time here in Tampa Bay. But, you know, this season, he has blossomed into a pretty legitimate wide receiver. And, you know, again, he can do a lot of things that the Bucks coaching staff likes. Again, he is fast. He has got some really good speed to him. He's a former track star um, at LSU, for goodness sakes, which is, you know, one of the main reasons he was able to land um, with so many different NFL teams. I think he's been on about eight NFL teams, including the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is absolutely crazy, but it shows that a lot of teams value the speed that he was bringing um, and we're at least willing to give him a speculative look. But, you know, going back to what he's done this year, he's got the insane speed. We've seen him have two very awesome deep touchdown passes from Tom Brady so far this year. That was great. He's got good hands. I haven't seen him drop a pass uh, yet this year, so that is an encouraging sign. And, again, much like what we've been talking about in the case of Tyler Johnson and Brashad Perriman, Cyril Grayson can actually run block. Uh, for those of you who, you know, weren't looking at the specifics of, you know, the recent 55-yard touchdown run that Keyshawn Vaughn had uh, a week or two ago, Cyril Grayson was crucial on that play for his run blocking. He was an unsung hero on that play. So again, you know, this guy can run block as well, which, you know, I'm sure not a lot of people were expecting for a guy like Cyril Grayson to have in his repertoire, but he's showcasing these skills right now. And uh, he's one of the guys, you know, especially in the last week or two, who has stepped up the most uh, when presented with some of these opportunities. So, you know, we're going to see some of all three of these guys, I feel, but as to who is going to be like the main guy that steps up out of Johnson, Perriman, and Grayson, I think it's anybody's guess because I think all three of these guys have the potential to do some really, really good things for the Buccaneers offense here moving forward in week number 18 and the Buccaneers playoff run as well. 
But, uh, you know, finally, guys, two more people I do have to mention are Scotty Miller and Jalen Darden, two really young wide receivers who I know a lot of people uh, want to see get, uh, you know, playing time. But it just hasn't been the case this year. You know, Scotty Miller, he had been dealing with some injuries early on in the season. And since he's been healthy, the Buccaneers coaching staff just hasn't given him a ton of opportunities on offense. Uh, I don't know. Well, I guess I do know why that is the case. You know, a lot of people have said that, you know, one of the only things that Scotty Miller can do is just run the deep route and, uh, you know, catch, you know, deep touchdowns due to his speed. And I think that's a safe thing to say. You know, I, I think we've even seen the Buccaneers coaching staff kind of talk about these types of things before where Scotty Miller... Um, one of his best attributes is his speed, but that's really one of the only things that he's bringing to the table right now. He's got room to improve, but right now as it stands, um, you have other guys who can do different things, which is why they're ahead of the depth chart right now over a guy like Scotty Miller. Uh, similar thing for Jalen Darden. He is obviously in his rookie season. He is still growing and developing as a wide receiver. When we've seen him get opportunities on the field, um, I think that both as a returner and as a wide receiver, um, you know, it's definitely not been great, you know, for lack of a better way to describe it. So Jalen Darden, he is still extremely young. He is still learning. I think he's going to be great, but right now the Buccaneers need some more veteran guys, some guys that can offer you different types of things. Jalen Darden, um, much like in the case of Scotty Miller, he's got great speed. Um, I think he does have, you know, pretty good route running and some good hands. Um, there just haven't been a ton of opportunities for him to showcase that right now, uh, just due to the fact of the urgency of needing guys who can run block and uh, do some other things that Jalen Darden can't do right now in this point of his career. So again, that's kind of the reason as to why Scotty Miller and Jalen Darden haven't been getting a ton of playing time. That could change. You know, again, these guys could both have some pretty awesome, you know, plays in the uh, playoffs and whatnot. You know, it's, it's really anybody's guess, but... You know, in my opinion, I feel the first three guys that are going to get looks are going to be Tyler Johnson, going to be Brashad Perriman, and going to be Cyril Grayson, then Scotty Miller and Jalen Darden, and who knows, maybe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will go out and uh, sign a wide receiver somewhere along the lines and uh, just roll with him. Also, I believe Justin Watson is on the active roster as well, so maybe he'll get some playing time. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But again, those first three guys that I mentioned... I think they're going to be the guys who get the first crack here. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts about this Buccaneers wide receiver situation down in the comments section below. Of course, I expect everybody to say that Mike Evans is going to have to step up. But out of all the names that I mentioned, who else do you guys think is going to step up in the Buccaneers wide receiver room? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.